the 33rd Archbishop of Manila, His Eminence Jose Fuerte Cardinal Advincula. <laughs> Philippine National Anthem, to be followed by the official anthem of the city of Manila. As His Eminence Jose Cardinal Advincula officially takes possession of his see, the cities constituting the Archdiocese of Manila will now formally welcome him through this civic reception and presentation. The five cities, San Juan, Makati, Mandaluyong, Pasay, and Manila, represented by their honorable mayors on this occasion, will present the keys to their respective cities to the new Archbishop of Manila. The city of San Juan, named after St. John the Baptist, established as a barrio at the start of the Spanish colonial period, it was reclassified as a municipality in 1783, and in 2007, 
it was converted into a highly urbanized city composed of 21 barangays. The city of San Juan has five parishes, the oldest of which, St. John the Baptist Parish, was established in 1864. To present the key to his city is the Honorable Mayor Francisco Javier Zamora, accompanied by his wife, Mrs. Kerry Neri Zamora. Independent municipality in 1670, originally named San Pedro de Makati, was shortened to simply Makati in 1914. The component municipality became a highly urbanized city in 1995. Makati is composed of 33 barangays. The city has two national shrines and 19 parishes, the oldest of which, St. Peter and Paul Parish was established in 1620. To present the key to her city is the Honorable Mayor Marlon Abigail Binay Campos. The city of Mandaluyong, first known as a barrio and originally named San Felipe Neri, it became an independent municipality in 1907 and was renamed Mandaluyong. In 1994, it was converted into a highly urbanized city. The city is composed of 27 barangays. It has one archdiocesan shrine and seven parishes the oldest of which, San Felipe Neri Parish, was established in 1863. To present the key to her city is the Honorable Mayor Carmelita Aguilar Abalos, accompanied by her husband, the Honorable Benjamin Abalos Jr., Chairman of the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority. City of Pasay, established as a pueblo in 1863 upon the recommendation of Archbishop Gregorio Meliton Martinez. In 1901, it became the municipality of Pasay and was later proclaimed a city in 1947. It is now composed of 201 barangays. It has one archdiocesan shrine and 10 parishes the oldest of which, Santa Clara de Montefalco Parish, was established in 1864. To present the key to her city is the Honorable Mayor Imelda Calixto Rubiano, accompanied by her husband, Mr. Edgardo Rubiano. Thank you. 
city of Manila, capital of the Republic of the Philippines, founded on June 24, 1571 by Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. It is composed of 897 barangays. It has four minor basilicas, three national shrines, six archdiocesan shrines, and 46 parishes. The first parochial church was built in 1571, which is now the Manila Cathedral. To present the key to his city is the Honorable Mayor Francisco Moreno Domagoso, accompanied by his Vice Mayor, the Honorable Maria Sheila Lacuna. Honorable Mayors, and welcome Your Eminence, Jose Cardinal Advincula, to the Archdiocese of Manila.
Please be seated. Some important Let us all stand and join Cardinal Jose Advincula for the prayer to St. Joseph. Hail, Guardian of the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you, God entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let the apostolic letter from the Holy See be read. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God. To our Venerable Brother, Jose Fuerte, Cardinal Advincula, until now Ordinary of the Archdiocese of Capiz, nominated Metropolitan Archbishop of the Ecclesial Community of Manila, greetings and apostolic blessings. Contemplating the mystery of Christ's compassionate condescension by which he has enhanced our humanity without thereby diminishing his divinity and has entered the depths of this world so that he may restore it by a new order, a new birth. We ought to embrace his precepts with all diligence so that through them the good of the church and the salvation of souls may be looked after with pastoral charity. We are urged by such responsibility and by pastoral fervor, even while we engrossly persevere in all the tasks and duties that are known to be prudently ordered and designed to foster growth among the Christian faithful. With fatherly concern and love, we turn our attention to the spiritual needs of the ecclesial community of Manila that is currently vacant, following the transfer of its last ordinary, our venerable brother Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle, to the office of Prefect of the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples, and awaits its new pastor, and Director of Diocesan Life. We therefore think of you, our Venerable Brother, who are found to be gifted with proven qualities, with merits accruing from your exercise of apostolic work in the Metropolitan Archdiocese of Capiz, that we deem you suitable to fulfill this new responsibility. Thus, Having listened to the counsel of the Congregation for Bishops, by the fullness of our apostolic authority, we release you from your responsibility and bond with the above-mentioned Church and appoint you Metropolitan Archbishop of Manila, granting you the rights that are due to this office and imposing upon you the obligations related to it. We desire that you make this decree of ours known to the clergy and the people of the said ecclesial community, whom we wholeheartedly encourage to receive and support you as their teacher and guardian. May you listen to the voices of the faithful, and may God grant his mercy upon you and upon the great flock now entrusted to your care. And may the grace of Christ be kept in your heart, so that always showing the example of charity, your faith may operate with works, and by works the faith be brought to completion. Given in Rome at the Lateran, on the 25th day of March, Solemnity of the Annunciation of the Lord, in the year 2021, the ninth of our pontificate, Francis. Let us therefore bless the Lord.
with faith in Jesus Christ and with love in my heart. I accept the pastoral care of the people of God in the Archdiocese of Manila. I promise to serve faithfully the Church in this Archdiocese as a loving and listening Father, gentle shepherd, faithful teacher, and steward of the mysteries of Christ. Jose Cardinal Advincula, our beloved shepherd in the Archdiocese of Manila. We are happy to have you with us. We recognize that you are a gift of the Church through our Holy Father, Pope Francis, to our local Church. We have been praying for a shepherd for the past 15 trying months. At last, our prayers have been answered, and you are now with us. I express the sentiments of joyous welcome of the Archdiocese, the clergy, the consecrated people, and the lay faithful. We know that you will have to adjust to the situation of leading a big urban Archdiocese. We admire your generosity in accepting this service to the Church. Do not be afraid. We are ready, as always, to cooperate and collaborate with our shepherds. You are not in this alone. As Pope Francis is stressing the synodal characteristic of the Church, so we walk together in building the kingdom of the fullness of life in the Archdiocese. We thank the former shepherds who have led the Archdiocese. All the past 32 Archbishops have given their share in the growth of this local church. We have two at the moment who are still living, Gaudencio, Gaudencio Cardinal Rosales, and Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle.
to them we give our heartful thanks. We have felt their fatherly care. And you can ask them, we are a good and obedient flock, aren't we, Cardinal Densi? It is unfortunate that we cannot now come near you to touch you and maybe give you a hug or kiss your ring as a sign of our homage. I hope this simple speech that I give in the name of the faithful of the Archdiocese expresses our joy, our ready disposition, and our openness to journey with you in the spirit of synodality in the coming years. Because of the pandemic, we were not able to gather together as priests to renew our priestly promises and commitment in front of the bishop last Holy Week. In a way, it is well so, so that now we can do this in front of you, our new Archbishop. So I invite all the priests present who are incarnated in the Archdiocese and who are working and staying in the Archdiocese of Manila to please stand up and together let us renew our priestly promises and our priestly commitment in front of our new Archbishop, Jose Cardinal Advincola. My heart is overflowing with gratitude to the Lord for entrusting this Archdiocese to my humble pastoral care and for giving me this new opportunity of expressing my love for Him by serving His people. My dear sons, my beloved priests, my collaborators in caring for the Lord's flock, let us join our hearts in renewing our commitment to the Lord and His Church in the presence of God's people. Renew the promises you once made at your ordination. Do you resolve, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as worthy fellow workers with the order of bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? I do. Do you resolve? to exercise the ministry of the Word worthily and wisely, preaching the Gospel and teaching the Catholic faith? I do. Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently in accord with the Church's tradition the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care by observing the command to pray without ceasing? I do. Do you resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ the High Priest who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? I do with the help of God. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. May the Lord keep us all in His charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please all stand.
Gloria in excelsis Deo. sa lupa'y kapayapaan. Uri sa Diyos sa kaitaasan at sa lupa'y Sunday, Buddha, and the 
let us pray. O God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Pagbasa mula sa aklat ni Propeta Isaias Makinig kayo mga taong naninirahan sa malalayong lugar Pinili na ako ng Panginoon bago pa isilang At hinirang niya ako para siya'y paglingkuran Mga salita ko'y ginawa niya sintalas ng tabak siya ang sa aking laging nag-iingat. Ginawa niya ako parang matulis na palaso na anumang oras ay handang itudla. Sinabi niya sa akin, Israel, ikaw ay lingkod ko. Sa pamamagitan mo, ako'y dadakilain ng mga tao. Ngunit ang tugon ko, ako ay nabigo sa aking pagsusikap. Hindi nagtagumpay gayong ibinuhos ko ang aking lakas. Gayon may, itinitiwala ko sa Panginoon ang aking kalagayan na ako'y gagantimpalaan sa aking nakayanan. Bago pa ako ipanganak, ay hinirang na ng Panginoon. Pinili niya ako para maging lingkod niya upang tipunin ang nangalat ng mga Israelita at sila'y ibalik sa bayang Israel. Binigyan ako ng Panginoon ng karangalan. Sa Kanya nagbubuhat ang aking karangalan. Sinabi ng Panginoon sa akin, Israel, na aking lingkod, may mas mahalaga pa akong ipagagawa sa iyo. Bukod sa pagpapanumbalik sa mga Israelitang nalabi, ay gagawin kitang tanglaw ng mga bansa upang lahat sa daigdig ay maligtas. Ang Salita ng Diyos Salamat sa Diyos my inmost being 
meet me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I'm fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, God raised up David as their king. Of him, he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. As John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. My brothers, children of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us, this word of salvation has been sent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately, his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. His Eminence, Gaudencio Cardinal Rosales, Archbishop Emeritus of Manila, His Eminence, Orlando Cardinal Quevedo, Archbishop Emeritus of Cotabato, His Excellency Charles Brown, Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, His Excellency Broderick Pabilio, Auxiliary Bishop of Manila, Their Excellencies, the Archbishops and Bishops of the Philippines, our national and local government officials, Reverend Monsignori and Fathers, consecrated men and women, brothers and sisters in Christ, those who are here with us inside this cathedral, and those who are patiently standing outside, and the thousands who are joining us through various media platforms. When our beloved Holy Father, Pope Francis, named me Cardinal, and eventually appointed me as Archbishop of Manila, 
I must confess, I was simply overwhelmed by such honor and responsibility. I have had many restless days and sleepless nights as I confronted my doubts and fears. But now, I am imbued with confidence to own the words of the prophet Isaiah as God's servant in the first reading. Yahweh called me from my mother's womb. He pronounced my name before I was born. Such distinct honor comes through with the responsibility as the Lord reveals to Isaiah. It is not enough that you be my servant. I will make you the light of the nations, that my salvation will reach to the ends of the earth. But the Gospel and the second reading today make me realize that like John the Baptist, I am but a herald for Christ our Savior is the light of the nations. As his name suggests, John the Baptist is the herald of God's mercy. As Christ's herald, I too must proclaim God's mercy. I stand here before you today as that herald. Let me convey my heartfelt gratitude to our beloved Holy Father, Pope Francis. Your Holiness, thank you for your trust and confidence. Your constant and living witness as the greatest herald of God's mercy in our times is truly my inspiration in shepherding Christ's flock. This must be the day the Lord has made. For three times, the bestowal of the red hat on me was postponed due to COVID-19 pandemic. It's time I simply smiled and thought in God's time. Today, I am finally here with, with you. See, I have had, I had the red hat and the cardinal's ring only seven days ago when I should have been wearing it seven months ago. The pandemic has indeed held us hostage for a year and a half already. Apparently, it is far from over yet. In fact, only my two sisters residing in copies, only 21 of my 142 priests, the mayor of Rojas City, Honorable Ronnie de Divas and his wife, Joan, and the governor of copies, Honorable Esteban Evan Contreras, are with us in this celebration to represent my family, the Archdiocese of Capiz, the city of Rojas, and the province of Capiz, also because of the pandemic. A good number of people would have been here with us if not for the pandemic. The scourge has crippled us in many ways, but it has enabled us to in more creative ways and has made us see clearly the things that we value most in our lives. Some people may actually think that God has abandoned us, but instead for us, steadfast believers, it simply shows that God, it, it simply shows forth God's power in the midst of our helplessness. For we see God as our only help 
in our helplessness. God's light shines on us in the midst of darkness. For the light of our faith allows us to see God's mercy even in this long moment of darkness. See, God's mysterious design has made this moment truly marvelous as an event of great historic significance for the Catholic Church in the Philippines. I could see three reasons why. First, because as we celebrate the year of Saint Joseph, God has called yours truly, a clueless Jose from Capiz, to be the ninth Filipino Cardinal. Who would have thought? We all did not see it coming. Personally, I find it providential because I have a special devotion to Saint Joseph. The second reason why it is historically, historically significant is that as we celebrate the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines, God has given me to the Archdiocese of Manila as its new shepherd. Clearly, Mission Agentes sends me off with a mission. You are gifted to give. What could be more challenging than that? The third reason for its historical significance is the beautiful coincidence today. On this very day, when I am installed as Archbishop of Manila, we are celebrating the founding of the city of Manila four centuries and a half ago. See how significantly historic this day is for us in the church as Filipinos and particularly as Manilenos. However, let us not get stuck in this, in this great historic significance of this moment for the responsibility it brings is truly overwhelming. It behoves us to ask ourselves, where are we Filipinos as a Christian people after 500 years of Christianity? Certainly the gift of faith has grown and continues to bear much fruit. God has gifted us with faith so that we too can become gifts to others. All of us are therefore gifted to give. As Filipinos, we also ask ourselves, what has happened to Manila after 450 years since it became a city? This is an event that should also help us reflect how significant Manila is in the formation of our values as a Filipino nation towards true communion and authentic progress. As we can see, the pastoral challenge far outweighs the significance of all these historic events converging today. All of us Filipinos are called to take up a challenge, such a challenge, in our respective ministry or area of responsibility, especially for us leaders of our nation and of our church. At this point, allow me to share with you how I see the pastoral challenge before me as your shepherd here in the Archdiocese of Manila. You must have heard something about me already, about my ministry as priest, as priest and bishop, and especially how I have tried to live up to my Episcopal motto, Audium, I will listen. 
My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, I have nothing new to tell you today except my commitment to renew my heart's desire. To renew my heart's desire to be a listening shepherd to the flock entrusted to my care. The priest, consecrated persons, and the lady of the Archdiocese of Manila. I am deeply aware how I fall short of people's expectations of me, how unworthy and inadequate I am in many ways. Like Moses and the prophet Jeremiah, I am not a good speaker. Despite their shortcomings, however, God had empowered them to speak on His behalf and show forth His saving power. Our beloved Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle, my dear predecessor, a very eloquent speaker, assures and empowers me in a video message posted online, telling me, and I quote, Just be who you are. Ang tinawag ng Diyos, ikaw. At ang maglilingkod ay ikaw. At ang ibibigay mo sa napakabuhay na sambayanan sa Archidioceses ng Maynila ay ikaw. Ikaw ang biyaya ng Diyos. Don't worry. You are God's gift as you are and be who you are. Cardinal Chito, maramin din pong salamat sa iyong pagiging tunay na biyaya ng Diyos sa akin at sa aming lahat. You are truly an inspiration so close to our hearts. As fruit of my prayer and discernment, I draw inspiration especially from the personal encounter of Simon Peter with the Lord when Jesus asked him three times, Do you love me? Peter replied, Yes, Lord, for three times. Only after that, after that total and unconditional commitment to love, did Jesus our Lord empowered Peter by saying, Feed my sheep. We all know how Peter denied Christ three times and cried bitterly afterwards for his weaknesses, for his weakness. How he tried to escape from Rome to avoid persecution and death. But our Lord challenged him, Quo vadis? Where are you going? So he went back to Rome and eventually died by crucifixion as his ultimate witness to Christ. Despite his shortcomings, Peter served Christ's flock faithfully until his last breath, giving his total and unconditional love to our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter proclaims that same fidelity as he urges the elders of the church. Give a shepherd's care to the flock of God that is entrusted to you. Heeding the call of the Apostle Peter, let me renew my love for Christ once more so that I may be able to give a shepherd's care to the flock he has entrusted to me. As he empowered Peter, our Lord empowers me to feed my sheep. First of all, it reminds me that it is not my sheep that I am entrusted to take care of. Rather, lest I forget, it is Christ's sheep, not mine. 
The real owner and shepherd of the sheep is Christ, not me. I am just his herald, his instrument. But I own them with all my heart in the name of Christ. As I surrender myself in prayer, Lord, use me. I beg you to grant me a steadfast faith that you will always be with me and will never abandon me. If the Lord were to use me as his herald, then that means I must listen attentively to Christ, what he wills me to do for his sheep. And he reveals his will as our good shepherd when he laid down his life for us, that we may be saved and have life to the full. Please pray for me that I may have a heart after that of Christ our Good Shepherd, a listening shepherd to Christ's bidding, ever ready to suffer for and serve Christ's sheep. And Christ bids me to feed his sheep. Feeding Christ's sheep implies knowing them and their needs, each one. The shepherd knows his sheep, and they know him. Knowing them implies listening to them, paying attention to the distinctive sound of every sheep. For Pope Francis, it is a call to stay close to the marginalized and to be shepherds living with the smell of the sheep. It is my ardent desire to listen to all, but especially to the lambs, which represent our youth and other people in the peripheries. Because of less attention given them by the church sometimes, their faith is as fragile as the health of a lamb. They are an easy prey for the marauding wolves. I cannot feed my flock unless I listen first to their needs, their longings. While listening to them, I would be able to journey with them in their sorrow and joy, in their suffering and glory, and work with them to bring them closer to Christ. I pray that Christ grant me the grace to be a listening shepherd to his flock so that I can journey with you and lead you all back to Christ, our good shepherd. Our solemn celebration of the birth of St. John the Baptist sheds light on this mission which brings me here with you today. As I have pointed out at the start, John was the herald of Christ, our Savior. As the newly installed Archbishop of Manila, I share in the mission of St. John the Baptist as Christ's herald. St. John the Baptist laid down his life for such a mission. I believe it also demands nothing less of me. I am now 69 years old. At the twilight of my ministry, I thought I was old, I was that old, to be transferred to another diocese. I was hoping to spend my remaining years in the Archdiocese of Capis, close to my family and fellow Capisenos. But in a mysterious fashion, God has called me to get away from my comfort zone and serve Him in a manner far beyond my expectations. And it demands of me a lot more than I can give if I am to shepherd His flock 
after his own heart. I remember the words of our dear Apostolic Nuncio when he bestowed on me the Cardinal's insignia in copies seven days ago. He shared how our, our Holy Father Pope Francis reminded us new Cardinals last November 28 that the color red that the Cardinals wear is the symbol of blood, a sign of martyrdom, a sign of witness. Because that martyrdom means to be a witness even to the shedding of their blood. It means surrendering myself to God in total and unconditional trust like John the Baptist and the Apostle Peter who lay down their lives for Christ's sheep. In this light, I also see myself like St. Paul, who was comforted and empowered by God, the same God who assures me now, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Before I end, let me thank the priests, consecrated persons and lady of the Archdiocese of Capis. Thank you so much for teaching me to be a shepherd who listens. For almost 10 years of being your bishop, I tried to be a listening shepherd to you. Yet, as you know well, there are still a lot that I should learn. As I leave you, please do not feel orphaned and shepherdless. As Cardinal Tagle reminded one of our priests in Rome, you are not orphans. You are not shepherdless. God is your father. God is your shepherd. As I officially start my ministry as Archbishop of Manila, I humbly plead with all the priests, consecrated persons, and the lady of the Archdiocese of Manila, let me be a listening shepherd to you, to you all, and let us learn from one another how to listen after the heart of Christ, our Good Shepherd. On the day of judgment, we are but Christ's servants. And how blessed are we to have such an opportunity to serve Him in our respective capacities and ministries. We are no more than Christ's heralds and instruments. Yet, if we remain faithful until the end, the Apostle Peter assures us, and when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, let us entrust ourselves to our Blessed Mother, the brightest herald of all times. In her loving embrace, we always find hope and consolation, strength and inspiration. May her maternal care keep us from getting astray and lead us closer to Christ, her Son, and our Divine Shepherd. Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, Pray for us who have recourse to the Amen.
Please all stand. I believe in God, in one Father God, Almighty. the Father Almighty, maker, maker of, heaven of heaven and earth, earth of all, all things, things visible and invisible. And invisible. I, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only, only begotten, begotten Son of God, God born of the, the Father before all ages, ages. God, God from God, God light from light, true God from true God, God begotten at me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son has is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to God our Father, who has continually guided and accompanied us in our journey of faith all these years. With confidence, let us implore Him and pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, Mother, and Teacher, that she may continue to be faithful in fulfilling her mission of teaching, guiding, and nourishing her children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Francis, our Pope, who said to our Bishop, and all the bishops and clergy, that they may have strength to shepherd generously the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the nations of the world, that they may work together towards the dialogue of solidarity, the culture of peace, sharing of goods, and generosity of people of goodwill. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office, that they may always seek the ways of righteousness, justice, and mercy, and lead our people with honesty and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the elderly, the sick, and all those in need, that they may be strengthened by our love for them as brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered, that we may be renewed in our faith life and may take part in shaping the church and society according to gospel values. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we lift up to you our petitions as we entrust in your mercy and wisdom. May we come to share the glory of your Son who draws our hearts to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, to celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of Him who both foretold the coming of the world's Savior and pointed Him, pointed him out when He came, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. In His precursor, Saint John the Baptist. We praise your great glory, for you can consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing. Even in the womb, he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption. And to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood and so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim holy Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Remember Lord, your, Lord church. your church, spread throughout the world. Bring her to fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, my room, but, but only say, say the, the word, and, and my soul shall, shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having feasted at the banquet of the heavenly Lamb, we pray, O Lord, that finding joy in the nativity of Saint John the Baptist, your church may know, as the author of her rebirth, the Christ whose coming, John foretold, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Your Eminence, Jose Cardo Advincula, Your Eminence, Cardinal Rosales, Your Eminence, Cardinal Quevedo, dear bishops and priests, consecrated persons, religious sisters and brothers, lay faithful of the Archdiocese of Manila, government officials, brothers and sisters in Christ, one and all, Today is truly a day of great joy, an historic day, the day in which we have celebrated the right of canonical possession and the installation of the 33rd Archbishop of Manila, His Eminence Jose Cardinal Advincula. And so it is for me as your 
Apostolic Nuncio, the representative of Pope Francis here in the Philippines. A real privilege to be part of this celebration this morning. What we have experienced today has not happened in this cathedral for almost 10 years, since the day in December 2011 when Cardinal Luis Tagle became Archbishop of Manila. Cardinal Tagle, who sends us his greetings this morning. Our new Archbishop, His Eminence Cardinal Advincula, is the 33rd Archbishop of Manila in a line stretching back 442 years to the year 1579, when Pope Gregory XIII named the first Bishop of Manila. And today, in the 500th year since the arrival of Christianity in these islands, that history continues. A new chapter begins. Manila is gifted with a new shepherd. It seems providential, doesn't it, that we celebrate this new chapter, this new gift on a birthday. The birthday, the nativity of St. John the Baptist. The announcement of Pope Francis's choice of Cardinal Advincula to be your new Archbishop took place three months ago on the solemnity of the Annunciation the day in which Our Lady learned from the angel Gabriel that her cousin Elizabeth was pregnant, notwithstanding her advanced years. At that moment, she, Elizabeth, was in the sixth month of her pregnancy. And Mary, as we know from the Gospel of St. Luke, went in haste to help Elizabeth, who today gives birth, the nativity of St. John the Baptist. This shows how attentive Our Lady is, doesn't it? How she accompanies, how she accompanies us also with her quiet but powerful loving presence. Surely she has accompanied Cardinal Avincula in these three months, and surely she will continue to do so as he now takes up his weighty, indeed very weighty responsibilities as Archbishop of Manila. And here today in this beautiful cathedral dedicated to her in front of her image, she is close to all of us as we welcome the Cardinal as your new Archbishop. May God bless you, dear Cardinal Advincula. May he give you many years of shepherding this flock. We promise you our unwavering support and our fervent prayers for your mission. Brothers and sisters, I cannot let this occasion pass by without also saying a word of very sincere gratitude and appreciation to His Excellency Bishop Broderick Padilio, who His Excellency Bishop Broderick Padilio, who has served as Apostolic Administrator of Manila over these past many months, 16, 17 months. Thank you, dear Bishop Padilio, for shepherding the Archdiocese so effectively with so much love and care during this time of, tradition, of transition. We are deeply grateful to you. Dear brothers and sisters, we welcome your new Archbishop today with open hearts and with joy. We promise, as we've said, that we will pray for him, that we will support him as he continues his service to the church now as the shepherd here in Manila. May God bless you all. Let us pray also for Pope Francis, who I'm sure is very, very close to us today in this beautiful celebration. God bless you. Please all stand.
two matters before we end this celebration. First, I would like to thank Bishop Broderick Pabilio, who, has, who had been the uh, Apostolic Administrator of the Archdiocese of Manila this past 16 months. And uh, this were, these, these were not normal or ordinary months, but very trying moments, especially in Metro Manila because of COVID-19. But, but Bishop Pabilio was able to steer well, the, uh, uh, was able to manage very well the Archdiocese until today when it is being uh, transferred to my management. So I thank, I thank very much Bishop Pavilio for the work well done. And the second is, we were informed of the sad news of the passing, the passing away of our former President of the Republic of the Philippines, President Benigno Noinoy Aquino III. Let us entrust him to the mercy of our loving Father, and let us now pray for the eternal repose of his soul. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.